Roberts. That's our word. I'm here with Matt Pritchard, known as uh, To Sauce on YouTube. And of course, me, Jim Jesus. Uh, the Lawburst is covered by a Bipcot no government license. It allows reuse by anyone except state governments. You can learn more at bipcot.org. We're connected to the magic of Fiend Phone, which is why we sound better than podcasts using Skype. Uh, you can learn more at fiendphone.com. And music, of course, is uh, threechainlinks.com until uh, our music composer makes something good for us finally. And it's a new it's a new month, so uh, that means it's a new flag, and we have the Bobby Hill. That's my purse. I don't know you, flag. Um, you can go and download it and have it printed yourself. There's all the information there. Uh, so how are you today, Matt? I am doing just fine. Great. So um, I was on uh, eBay the other day and I bought this machine and it smelled like it seemed like it was like in an alley somewhere in new york or whatever and it smells terrible but i aired it out and i brought it inside finally and apparently it's just like this machine that psychoanalyzes people um anyways um i've never talked to you i mean I, we, we did like a uh a game or whatever uh yeah, yeah libertarians against humanity but we never really talked so uh i don't know who you are so i have a list of questions and this is almost like a weird scantron machine that smells like bum puke but um uh so we're gonna go ahead and Get your answers to these questions, put it in the machine, machine and see how who you are, okay? So, All right, I'm, I'm ready for this. Okay. Tell me, uh, this, uh, it sounds so familiar, by the way. Uh, anyways, um, yes or no? <laughs> yes. Left or right? Right. Light or dark? I'm going to go with light. Up or down? Do oh, down. Day or night? Day. High or low? For the purposes of protecting myself, low. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> White or black? White. Eh, racist. Red yeah, well, or blue? I say, what, why is this is about race now? Is that what? <laughs> <laughs> you just said that these were just like questions, man. This is like a Rorschach test, right? That, is that what? I'm, that's what I'm doing, or is it not? A, <laughs> I think you wrote this. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, oh fuck! <laughs> all right. <laughs> I did. I did throw that machine away off my my old puck. Oh, so. that's that's we'll probably see. where I got yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Red or blue? Oh, red. <laughs> Sci-fi or fantasy? Sci-fi. DVD or Laserdisc? DVD? Are you kidding? I'm not going to put a fucking hubcap. I don't, oh, I'm sorry. Can I swear? Is that yeah, of course we can swear. <laughs> okay, okay, just, okay. Good. We're just kind of like the Dr. Octagon rule. Like, we try not to, but be as offensive okay. as we can while we're not. Okay. But if we don't, fuck it. Good. I'm glad we, <laughs> we established this before we started recording. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um yeah i don't want a hubcap uh you know with my movie on it but it's so it's so pretty all right uh kirk or picard picard that's not a question man <laughs> oh you know some people like that kind of skippy voice uh star yeah, wars some people do crack uh, some people do crack touche do you want me to do all right some people like molyneux um star wars or <laughs> star wars or star trek <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, Star Wars. <laughs> uh, cuck servative or the three by five card of allowable opinion? The three by five card of allowable opinion. <laughs> Murray Rothbard or David Friedman? Murray Rothbard. Trump or Sanders? Oh, God. <laughs> if you think that um, one's bad, wait till the next one. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> uh, Trump. <laughs> At least he'll take your calls. Uh, yeah. Cantwell or Peterson? <laughs> oh. oh, Peterson. <laughs> Affleck. That's, and that's, that is a tough fucking question, but, <laughs> but Peterson. <laughs> I was thinking about this, but I was like going through this. So I was like, <laughs> oh, I don't know if I can answer that. <laughs> that is. <laughs> uh, but, you know, at least I don't have to explain things to my mother if it's Peterson. Um, Affleck. Yeah, exactly. Affleck or Affleck Daredevil or Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern. <laughs> oh god oh fuck me um i'm gonna go with affleck daredevil because i never saw the green lantern <laughs> and i think that affleck is underrated uh, yeah you know what like oh, okay, we can get into that later um davis arini or jordan jordan owens <laughs> uh jordan owens i don't know who that is but it's not arini and the answer is always not arini <laughs> that's great <laughs> <laughs> the answer is always not Arini. Uh, 
No, the, the Green Lantern, I don't know. I, I had seen the Green Lantern, and it came out, what, 10 years after the Daredevil, Affleck Daredevil, and it was just yeah. horrible. Horrible. I did see, I, I used to work in a movie theater uh, oh. while the Green Lantern was in there, and I saw like two seconds of the very end of that movie, and I was just like, this is absolute horseshit. <laughs> I will never watch this. <laughs> <laughs> and the Daredevil was not much better. No. Uh, so... What was the other thing? Oh, Affleck. Yeah, like you know, you're you're into movies. I hear some something. Mm-hmm. Someone told me you're like into movies. Yeah, may, maybe a little, just yeah, a tiny yeah. little. Um, yeah, like I thought that Affleck was the worst possible person to play Batman ever, and then I was just like, oh, I'm totally against it. I don't want nothing to do with it. And then I saw Argo, mm-hmm. and I was like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I was so wrong. And I had to like kind of issue an apology, like, Okay, sorry, Affleck. Apparently, you're not that bad after all. I. I- I mean, the guy, he's he's made some bad movies, as I'm sure everybody has, and he's made a ton of money. He made a ton of movie, money doing those movies, but the guy is incredibly talented, uh, and as a director especially, he's, like, fantastic. I loved the town. Uh, I never saw Argo. <laughs> everybody says it's oh amazing, but I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, you have to go see that. Rent it as soon. I'm sure you could probably still find it. Do you have those red box things out there and... In, uh, um, no, I, we might, but I also have a series of tubes connected to my computer. Uh, um, so, I heard about that. Well, yeah. I don't know about that total TV, that, that total T, TPP thing that's being passed, right? Did it just get passed? I heard it just got passed today. Oh, I could I don't be know. wrong. So yeah, you could probably go to jail now. Actually, go to oh, jail. Really? For, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! At least this is probably according to the scare propaganda I've heard. It's probably totally false, you know. Yeah, libertarians. So um, yeah, you're into movies, right? Didn't you just make a movie or something? Yeah, we we shot it, and I have about seventy five percent of the rough edit done, and it's been sitting on my hard drive for a while because I'm in the process of switching careers and have zero time to work on it at the moment. <laughs> you're squandering so it my will, money. So it will be coming out, and. Okay. Even if my house burns down, the footage is in three locations, so, oh, okay. so it will come out. Yeah. Did you have any problems with the with the state? Like, did you have to get film permits or anything like that when you did it? Oh God, no. We uh, we just filmed at uh, my friend's house, and uh, I mean, we didn't do that sounds anything illegal. with that. Sounds yeah, so well, illegal. Well, you know, I'm calling the cops. <laughs> you do what you have to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, have you heard about this? Uh, where did I have it? I, I'm re- I'm ready to do a show right now. By the way, uh, <laughs> there's a uh, okay. <laughs> there was a new show. There was a new. Oh, here it is. Uh, Florida candidate for U.S. Senate admits to sacrificing goat and drinking blood. Now he's a libertarian candidate. Um, yeah, of course he is. Yeah. Now I had. Oh, that's great. Thank, thank you, autoplay. You didn't hear it, but it's just like I love how videos like to autoplay on people's websites. Oh my websites. god, it is so frustrating. I, I think everybody should have that on their website. Just just play a random audio. Everyone will love it. No one will ha- ever have a problem <laughs> with that. You know, no one's going to be ever recording a podcast. You know, and wanting to use their article. <laughs> Jackass. Anyways, um, <laughs> so two years ago, Augustus, is that how you say it? Augustus Saul Inviticus, uh, which is an interesting name, walked from central Florida to the Mojave Desert and <laughs> spent a week fasting and praying, um, at times thinking he wouldn't survive in a pagan, pagan ritual uh, to give thanks to when he returned home. He killed a coat and drank its blood. Uh, now, I'm not a big <laughs> fan of drinking cow blood um i get i get my blood from nick uh and he's a yak farmer so <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm more into the yak thing but uh-huh. i don't know like have you drank goat blood before i mean being a libertarian i i have not personally but i i do support his stance on drinking goat blood it's uh you know i think that the fact that he's you know he's actually taking a stand on the issue where most politicians you know will just avoid the question that that really speaks to me as a as a uh, an american in the heartland this is great this is absolutely fantastic good <laughs> like i think we I, we definitely need to have more candidates who would stand up to the status quo that you shouldn't drink goat's blood i mean first it was raw milk and now we have goat's blood i mean i, I know i mean what what's what's next at this point yeah so the chairman of the libertarian Par- party of florida had resigned <laughs> <laughs> because of all this <laughs> and uh and he's using that, that as you know like, that actually does shock me because the libertarian party is full of just the craziest people this guy obviously not included uh but they're, they're insane and i i am shocked that someone would step down from that organiz- organization i thought that they would just use this as a platform to continue infighting 
Uh, that's, that's the only thing I've ever got from the LPs. Like, just argue with each other endlessly. <laughs> so let's see. Um, yeah, so he resigned, and he's using that as kind of like a platform to speak out against the LP of Florida to say, like, mm-hmm. you know, he's recruiting neo-Nazis, and he's he's drinking blood and stuff like this. And this guy's absolutely absolutely crazy. I don't know if about this thing about him recruiting neo-Nazis, but it's not too far off of what we've been seeing recently. Yeah, I know. That, wouldn't, that would not shock me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so I have some uh, he's now what's great about this person as crazy as guy is, is <laughs> recruiting neo-Nazis and drinking goat's blood. Um, mm-hmm. What could be possibly better uh, than that? Well, well, maybe if he had a YouTube channel <laughs> talking about his belief. <laughs> and guess what? He does. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so we're going to please tell me he's not subscribed to me. <laughs> Uh, we can check later. <laughs> I'll put it in the show notes. I'm sure he's probably subscribed to me. He's probably mad at, like, I don't know. <laughs> he's probably mad at Molyneux for saying think bad things about him or something. Who knows? Dionysus the thrice born eye bearing Jesus have to hell descended, conquer death by becoming death master. Now, it's worth pointing out that um, in the description of this video, it says LSD recording. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Life right. by becoming life. For truth be told, life and death are one and his name is nature. And to you, dead men of a great world, what but madness on nature's rights? You rational men, you intellectual, how you despise the irrational, the spirit. But you, oh you empty flitting shades, you ghosts of greater men, do you not see it was raisin late you low brought you down to the house of death? Do you even know what he's talking about? I, I'm I have at this no point. fucking Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I was listening to this earlier, and I was like, maybe Matt can explain it to me. I mean, he's all nope. into these horror films, <laughs> and I'm sure he's learned, picked up something about weird paganist religions along the way. Nope. <laughs> I uh, have I'm gonna fast no clue. Forward. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Maybe he's going to talk some sense. I don't know. He's on Let acid. These bones and battles burden bore <laughs> and sink us down, all splintered planks and sun-seared skin. God of vortices and open seas, oh let it end and quickly. And may our oars never wash ashore to tell how I survived the war, but died amidst the void. So um, it's like he's trying to like rap and <laughs> throw like Shakespearean. I don't know. It, yeah, it's almost kind of like that trying to be like Martin Luther King kind of like bombastic wave speaking, which is not bad. I mean, yeah, but, that but too. At, that least too. He, at least MLK made sense. <laughs> you know, like he was talking coherently. So anyways, <laughs> Inviticus for, for Senate, definitely. So he's got another one, and it's even weirder. <laughs> and I was kind of like flipping through the channels earlier, and these are like the two that I could grab that, that seem to make the most amount of sense. Take that as you will. Okay. <laughs> okay. And this one has like, it's actually playing right now, but there's no audio. I mean, this guy is a you know professional. Oh um, God! America, oh, here we go. Finally, you would no longer stand by. Give me a war. I'll give you life. He actually sings in this one, by the way. Oh boy. I mean, I literally don't even right now. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean, this guy seems like a pretty well-adjusted member of society. I, c- I could see myself, you know, getting behind his platform of, you know, jumbled nonsense. <laughs> I mean, why not? I mean, I mean, libertarians are already endorsing Trump right now. Why not this guy, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> By the way, this is not The Onion. <laughs> I have to point this out. This is- <laughs> if this was The Onion, it would be like U.S. Senator, not U.S. Senate candidate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually stole that joke from someone. I forget who yeah this guy is this guy's amazing <laughs> this is this is like when uh the 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 evangelicals are like speaking in tongues yeah but, but this is like the libertarian version <laughs> pagan libertarian. you don't mess around with that christian stuff we're on the harder stuff so i guess the um the the chairman former chairman who stepped down said he's an a- he's the absolute exact opposite of a libertarian he's a self-proclaimed fascist and he's promoting the second civil war he's absolutely it's absolute <laughs> insanity we must explain to the people that this is the opposite of libertarianism or libertarians um this guy has no place in the libertarian party 
Uh, this guy's it, a it lawyer. It might be the, the opposite way. of libertarianism, but it's not the opposite of the Libertarian Party. Yeah, that that's seems like pretty standard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, one of the people that I follow and are subscribed to on YouTube, and he initially kind of interested me because he was making critiques of like Kokesh and Molyneux, and um, mm. now he's like promoting this 9/11 Truth book, and I'm like, and he's no. he's like a chairman of the Libertarian Party in San Diego. I think his oh name's Chris God. Benoit. Yeah. Good old I actually, I, I spoke at the Libertarian Party of Queens uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and they were, you know, nice people. Uh, and this guy comes up to me, has this huge beard uh, afterwards. And he, and he hands me this, this printed out newsletter. Like printed out newsletter about like aliens and G-men. <laughs> and I took it. I didn't know what to do. Like I was, I was polite. He was very nice, but it was just like, you're fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me you still have this. <laughs> oh, good. no, I, I, I think I threw it away when I moved, but I did have it for like two years. <laughs> I'd bring it out and show it to people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not just like the local levels. I mean, it's also like the national levels too. Like I was actually a big fan of, um, I know you heard of him, uh, Michael Badnarik. And Michael Badnarik seemed like a pretty rational guy. He was, you know, he, he did a great job when he was speaking, when he was running for president. Mm -hmm. And I uh, was really interested and I contacted him. And then like, we ended up becoming like good internet friends after a while. And I had yeah. no clue that this guy was like a, a hardcore, like conspiracy and like lunatic. I mean, even like a lot of conspiracy <laughs> theory people, like the 9-11 truth would be like, wow, this guy's really off the rails. Yeah. And, um, you know, like he started doing this um, this radio, quote unquote, internet radio. It's not real radio, but he started doing yeah. this internet uh, sh uh, radio show called "Lighting the, the Fires of Liberty" or whatever, and um, it was pretty good. Like when it first started, I've definitely out. heard of this. Okay, so it was really good when it started out, and then it started like slowly morphing into conspiracy radio, and like it, and then it just went from okay, nine <sighs> eleven, I can understand, like you're whatever. Just skip that episode. And then he'll start. He did start doing like chemtrails and Jews. And then the one that really <laughs> did it for me was the the whole psycho. The, the psychology is a conspiracy by the government. You know, to do another Holocaust. And uh, he actually had a guy on from the Scientology thing. And I actually called in and was like, hey, "Do you believe in Zeno? Don't talk about science, please." <laughs> like, yeah. And yeah. then like after that, he stopped talking to me. But um, I actually I have that's a, weird. I wonder why. Yeah, he has like this book, and after reading it. I had read it like after I started noticing he was a conspiracy theorist, then I bought the book and then I was like, wow, this guy really is out of it. I mean, he thinks things like, um, like, you know, you can drive around a car legally without a license plate. If you have the, the manufacturer's certificate of origin. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, he's one of those type of people, tax protesters, all that. I mean, all the cons crazy conspiracies are in his book. Good to be King. And I thought, I thought that was like a good introductory text to it. And then I was like reading it and I was like, okay, five chapters in, I was like, mm, I'm done with this. <laughs> yeah. I think I've had enough of that. <laughs> yeah. So the LP is crazy on all fronts. Uh, but yeah. I think this one takes the cake though. <laughs> so he's a 32 year old lawyer. Uh, who changed his given name, which he declares uh, he declines to reveal his real name, but it's a Latin <laughs> phrase for that means uh, majestic unconquered son. <laughs> that sounds about right. Okay, okay, I can see where he's going with this. He seems conquered to me right now, though. But anyways, mm -hmm. um, he says he's not a white supremacist. He's just pointing out his four ch pointing out that his four children are Hispanic, um, though he acknowledges some white supremacists has supported his campaign. Well, yeah. Hmm. Uh, sacrifice, yes. I mean, what are you going to do? Not not accept their support? Yeah, there's <laughs> nothing you really could, you know, can do. It's like, well, you know, I can't stop you from voting, you know. And if yeah. you even come out and say I'm against racism, you know, they're still going to support you, like they did Ron Paul. I know they're going to be <laughs> they're going to be like, yeah, yeah, we know, wink, wink, we, yeah, wink. <laughs> no, no, seriously, I hate you. Like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I hate uh -huh, David Duke uh -huh. too. We huh? hate you too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I did sacrifice a goat. No, this is not even the great greatest quote, but any, I'll read it anyways. I did, <laughs> I did sacrifice a goat. I know that's probably qu uh, quibble in the mindset of most Americans. I sacrificed an animal to the, the gods of the wilderness, and yes, I drank the, the goat's blood. <laughs> now, on his wiki page, no, I have to pull that up because, you know, I'm professional and I have everything booted up right already, right? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. And let's hope that Wikipedia doesn't have autoplay audio. Uh, like... <laughs> This one did. <laughs> now this on this wikipedia page and our, our links are all this are in the, gonna be in the show notes um he has like one of the greatest quotes i've ever read from a politician ever even more than donald trump believe it or not 
I do not want you to vote so much as I want you to wake up. I want you to drop, uh, drop out and tune in. Uh, I want you to take LSD and practice sorcery. I want you to listen to trap music and black metal, to learn the law and, br and break it deliberately, to find your own religion. I want you to learn the use of firearms and subject yourself to rigorous physical training. I want you to treat your bodies as holy temples and take your girlfriends to, to a strip club <laughs> so, you can, <laughs> so you can seduce a dancer in the back room. I want you to worship nature and dance naked in the moonlight round a fire, screaming ecstatic joy. I want you to revolt, raise hell, break... It, <laughs> limitations renounce your life go into the wilderness and <laughs> that god may speak to you uh of, of things to come i think god would speak to you <laughs> if you did like half of those things <laughs> so so he wants you to take lsd and listen to music to learn the law uh, trap music and black metal and then learn a law to break it what the fuck <laughs> oh yeah. my god and he's running for senate he's he's got this He's got the Libertarian Party nod. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so if you ever needed a good reason why the LP is just terrible, here you go. And he's, there's 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 number one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess we could also talk about the uh, LP in Canada. <laughs> they were supporting. Do they have Jeff. one? Yeah, and Jeff Berwick was actually running. They finally got around to kicking him out after the whole passport he, thing. But he lives in Mexico. Yeah, but he was actually running for president or prime minister or whatever they call it in Canada. It's not even a real country, but um, yeah, I know. I the, <laughs> he's actually running for president <laughs> of whatever it is. Um, oh my God. In, in Acapulco as a, I guess he, I don't know if he's not Canadian or anymore. I think he renounced, he expatriated, right? So that means he's not a citizen. Oh my God. And he was trying to run for president. Yeah, and then they end up kicking him off after the whole passport scam thing. <laughs> like he he literally gets like more horrible every single time I hear about him. Yeah. Like without exception. Yeah. So I mean like for me it was like okay, he's a 9/11 truther and he's you know doomsday like yeah, I'll just blow him off. I'd have nothing interest. And then he started doing the um the Thrive documentary. And that's when I was like, eh, I'm done. Nope. <laughs> you can go oh, away God. now. Uh, he was promoting them on the, his podcast and talking about how great it was and everything. And I was like, th for those of you who don't know, Thrive makes the Zeitgeist movies look like, you know, a PBS documentary. They're that insane. <laughs> and, you know, and like, you know, like you, you, like you think the movie's already over once they get talking about the economics. You're like, okay, so that's their prescription to fix everything, right? Right wrong mm -hmm. it keeps going on and it starts they start bringing in people like um deepak chopra uh, deepak chopra and start oh talking to him about like all that stuff and i'm like are you kidding me how could this be any worse and god just, you see this this is why i don't pay attention to the news or or anything <laughs> on facebook this is why i had nothing to do oh my god this is insane <laughs> so he was promoting that no this was years ago by the way years ago this is when you were still making youtube videos almost regularly Oh man! And then uh, now he's promoting this guy named Eric Dubé, who is a literal fl flat. I'm not talking about like flat earther in the sense that oh he denies global climate change and you know it's the same thing as denying you know the Earth is flat. No, he actually believes the Earth is a flat disk and that there's a government conspiracy making sure that no one else knows about it and like they have the UN in on it trying to prevent people from flying over Antarctica to find the truth. And it's the most insane video I've ever seen in my entire life, and it's on his Anarchist yeah, channel. It's it's fucking crazy. I I saw it and I watched about a minute of it and immediately went in for chemotherapy. <laughs> it was just absolutely horrendous. You didn't even so one minute in they didn't even talk about that. They were too busy talking. Oh, I know. About I skipped. I skipped forward. Oh, I know. Okay. I I was like they're gonna. I was like the title of the video is about the flat Earth conspiracy. Like I it's in here somewhere. So you know I'm I'm scrubbing through the video and they get to it and they're talking about how like uh, if you bring you know, a, a, a camera on a blimp up really high into the atmosphere and you look around, the horizon is still flat. Like <laughs> it's, it's flat. And, the, and I was just like, I, I can't believe that I'm, I'm, I'm seeing this. Like we, we, oh, like my head hurts right now because of this. This is, I hate these people. <laughs> yeah. But they're the, they're the face of libertarianism right now. Uh, and it's, cra it's crazy. I hate this, this psychology that people have of like, you know, 
and they're the type of person who are going to believe this stuff anyway but once they get into libertarianism it's like oh the government says something like you know one plus one equals two oh well maybe it doesn't let me find someone who's who has an alternative and they find whatever crazy time cube type shit they can they can find and it's like oh well you know obviously it's conspiracy obviously the government is trying to keep this out have you looked at this evidence yet and it's just i i don't need to look at evidence that the the, the earth is is round I've, I've seen evidence you know i've been on a plane you can see that the earth fucking curves no that's just the shape of the window man you're being deceived by the government <laughs> oh man and and what would be the point what's the conspiracy why why don't they want us to know that the earth is flat um reasons reasons yeah, and that's that's the thing it's reasons that's it <laughs> that's the best you're gonna get that's the best you're gonna get so and then now he's promoting the Shemitah thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is this is so insane. Bad. I know. This is really, <laughs> really crazy. <laughs> oh, okay. Straight face, straight face, doing a comedy show. So um he he's promoting this thing called the Shemitah. And the Shemitah is an event that happens every what was it, seven years in uh, the Torah or whatever. And like, there's these dates in the Torah and every seven years they happen, like, you know, some bad thing is going to happen to Israel or the people, uh, you know, in Israel. And that's yeah. what it was originally for. But they're taking this and saying, like, oh, it's, it applies to everything because, you know, we understand the Torah, right? Um, and <laughs> I'm sure they do. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, well, look, look, 9-11 was a Shemitah date. And like, you know, the, the collapse last time was a Shemitah date. And then like, you go back and they're all Shemitah dates. Actually not. But, um, you know, it's it's confirmation bias. And mm-hmm. so Jeff Berwick was selling this thing like Shemitah's is coming this year. And, you know, you got to find out what it's about. And and you got to, like, give me a bunch of money and buy my new book that's going to tell you about the Shemitah. And. Because if you don't, you know, the world currency is not going to be the U.S. dollar anymore. We're going to have a collapse. The stock market's going to crash or something along those lines is going to happen uh, around September 13th. Because that's the Shemitah date for this year. And oh, uh, so pull all your money out. Buy gold. I sell gold, by the way. And uh, <laughs> so buy, <laughs> buy gold. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, you'll be okay or whatever. So the 13th comes around. And the, the, the thing that was supposed to destroy the U.S. economy was... A bunch of migrants were moving into Germany and they were turning them away. That was that was it. Oh, I mean, well, I mean, that's it. That's obvious. Like, yeah. it, that's what that's what he predicted. That's what he said was going to happen. Of course, was that migrants were going to come into Germany? Like, yeah, that was that was that's in the Torah. <laughs> you didn't knew that. You didn't know that. You haven't. I bet you haven't even read the Torah yourself. I no. Um. No, but I'm sure it's yeah, how do you gonna, know? Yeah, how do you someone's going to accuse us of being Jewish anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know how well, that I, I do live in New York, so. Yeah, you know. you're chilling. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I keep forgetting. I'm so sorry. That's so intense. <laughs> I mean, you can be sorry all you want. I like it here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a piece of that here in Vegas, by the way. But anyways, um, <laughs> this is, uh, like every time I hear about something about Berwick, it just gets worse. And now, like it turns out, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you've heard about this girl, um, Julie Tura- I think her name is Julie Tarowski. She runs a website called Brave the World. Uh, and- yeah, I'm familiar with the with the website, but I, I don't know, I don't pay attention. So you yeah. Know. So <laughs> on the side, she this says, is a good like, podcast right here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is great because then I have to explain it, right? So um, right, right, right. So she's like this this Ru- I guess she's she was born in Russia. She moved to Canada when she was really little. When they you know the Iron Curtain rose, and of course you know she became a staunch um, pro capitalist. You know, like Rand did. When, you know, pretty much anybody mm-hmm. that comes out, you know, ends up being a, like a hardcore yeah. conservative yeah. or libertarian. Um, so she she says that she's a one person operation. Like she does everything herself, all the video editing and all the stuff. And um, it turns out she has like these really deep connections, and like she's like being paid for by like billionaires in the libertarian movement. Uh, but she does she's not upfront about it at all. And so she's mm-hmm. like, you know, oh, I'm just like this one person, you know. And it turns out she has connections to Berwick, uh, Alex Jones, uh, the Mises Institute of Canada, like all these other mm-hmm. things. You know, she's getting all of her information through this, and. She, you know, she's trying to pretend like, oh, it's just me. I'm, I'm doing everything myself. You know, I'm just, right. this, I don't really know much about the world, but I do know how, you know, I do have some great ideas. No, she doesn't. And she has like all these affiliations. She's not upfront about it. And Feminist Law, I don't know if you're familiar with her. 
Oh. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she used to be like one of the writers for Voice for Men, and she's been like one of the big people that like, exposed Voice for Men uh, mm-hmm. after she left. But she did this thing, and she was like talking about how she was like this, you know, basically a, a con artist, and how she's really kind of quote no, not really in bed, but in bed with you know Berwick and his team or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, she's had all these deep connections, but she's not upfront with it. And um, so she was, she was like, when someone pointed it out to her, I think no, it was Diane Davison. She mentioned it like she was like, "You're not being upfront about who you are." And her initial response was, "Oh, you know, well, you're just trying to say, you know, you're just being sexist by saying I can't do these things by myself." And went on like libertarian podcast and was like dogging on her and stuff. But oh god, yeah, great stuff. Yeah. <laughs> People are great. <laughs> <laughs> libertarians are great. <laughs> yeah. That's and that's that it's honestly like libertarians should be like a very trustworthy group of people and I think for, in in the most part like libertarians will meet are fine like that but any like public figure who is offering anything in which you have to give them money it's a scam. Yeah. Like it's a scam. Don't do it. They are they're gonna defraud you out of your money and you'll never see it again yeah pretty much uh, i mean we had that what that gold thing that happened not too long ago uh do you know anything about that did you hear about that someone mentioned no. it to me i don't know i don't know what it was called but there was a company that they were kind of like they were associated with like um a whole bunch of like liberty people were promoting it and then it turned out to be a huge scam um uh, not mm-hmm. their fault but you know they just did yeah yeah no i know yeah and then um, it's just people i mean it's it's like people are looking for some sort of you know way out for you know their money or anything and they're they want that so bad that they're willing to give it to these just mongoloids (laughs) (laughs) i think that's actual technical term of these people it Um, it is yeah yeah yeah. and then we had uh then we had jeff berwick in the uh gold skills chile uh yeah that was amazing yeah then like right like if you didn't learn your lesson from that then you had the passport thing, and everyone's yep. getting their passports through that. Um, oh man, I just just down the list. I'm like, like there's a whole bunch. Of, oh, I guess we can kind of count Ma- Ma- Mount Gox a little bit, right? Um, sort of. Yeah, some. Yeah, somewhat. Yeah, you know, people were kind of heavily invested in this company, and they didn't really know too much about it. But you know, hey, whatever, it's Bitcoin. We trust these guys, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I actually I, I remember uh, the first time I tried to buy Bitcoin. I went to Mount Gox and uh, this was even, I think before I moved to New York and I was just using the site and I can't remember what the terms were for how you paid and how you got your Bitcoin. I was just like, this is horseshit. Like I am not giving these people a cent and I was vindicated. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I, I, when I first tried to do it, they were like asking all sorts of questions about my personal thing. They wanted my tax ID and all this stuff. And I was like, yeah, no, let's try somewhere else. And I found Coinbase, and I was like, I'll just do this. This seems yeah. way more legit. But now it turns out that they might be like in bed with the uh, with the government, give, giving them information. But uh, oh, I'm I'm sure they are. And yeah. and like the the, the thing it. is, most people who use Bitcoin uh, don't have any idea of how to obscure their identity in any way. And Bitcoin is incredibly public, so I am positive that large financial institutions in the government are data mining the blockchain like crazy and a lot of a lot of people who are spending money who think they're they're anonymous in any way are completely wrong <laughs> yeah on top of that like they're like oh donate to my bitcoin wallet here it is right here and then they're like okay i'm gonna go buy drugs on the silk run with the same wallet like yeah i know oh. <laughs> <laughs> do you not know anything do you not know oh anything <laughs> Uh, and then you got like you know Cocash. He was like, "Oh, look, this is how you buy drugs on on Silk Road." It's like, that's you're doing. That was it wrong. so funny. I I really is he still going to run for president? Is that I, what he's I claiming? No, I seriously. Oh God, I I so hope he does. Just to see the political campaign attack ads of him doing DMT on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, we're actually going to see the passion of the Kokesh as yeah. one of the attack ads. <laughs> I'll put that in the show notes too, if I remember. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Well, speaking of that, like, did you have anything to say about all these neo reactionaries that have that are coming out of the libertarians now? All the people that are in libertarianism that are kind of transitioning over to neo reactionary and fascist, like actual fascism, not like, actual oh, like, fascism. Yeah, yeah, not like I disagree with them; they're fascists. And, like actual, they're fascists. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like brown shirts. Yeah. 
and, and nakedly so. Um, yeah, I I actually know a a few neo reactionaries who I think they're wrong about a lot of things, but they're not like actual fascists. Mm. <laughs> um, and they do have some interesting points uh, as far as um, what's his name, Mencius Mold uh, Moldbug, uh, or whatever his name is, the the kind of first neo reactionary on the internet he writes these just insanely long blog posts they're so so fucking long oh, is um, that the uh the dark dark enlightenment guy right i think so yeah I, I i haven't looked too far into it just because i'm i have no patience to read you know an 80 page <laughs> blog post <laughs> that's just not happening um but he's written some some interesting stuff but by and large uh they are just stupid they have it's it's like they want to have their cake and eat it too with regard to the market, uh, and it 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 they, there's just there's so much about them that bothers me, <laughs> and they they misdiagnose problems, uh, and and the thing that bothers me the most is that they 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 always claim that oh you're just so naive libertarians are just so naive you're, and it's like you're cooks. It's like, yeah, but but I know you guys used to be libertarians, and I know you're familiar with the public choice school of economics. Why on earth do you have any 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 reason to believe that the state, if you if your incredibly marginal group, more marginal than anarcho capitalism, which is saying something, mm -hmm. if they ever got power, why do you think politicians would pursue pursue your policy goals as opposed to their own goals? Mm -hmm. I, and there's there's no fucking response for that. Yeah, I guess. Well, I guess Trump is their response to that now. Uh, they seem to be digging on that guy a lot lately. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I I don't know. I don't even know what to say. Uh, Trump. <laughs> I I I was finding Trump funny for a long time, but it was when you know people started beating up immigrants and saying <laughs> as they're getting arrested, Trump was right. You know that that was at the point where I was like, this is bad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean we, it's it's a it's a reflection of of the American culture. Not like he's not what's prompting this. It's just people are you know he's bringing that out, <laughs> yeah. bringing it to light. I mean, it's always been there, yeah. But now now they have someone they can back and say like, oh look look look. Uh, yeah, but you know, like when Paul supports somebody, it's kind of like oh, <laughs> I don't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every, you know. Ever since they kind of backed away from the whole libertarian thing, and now they're actually unironically supporting fascism. It's like mm. I, I know, and that's the thing. Like I, I understood the joke when it was a joke about uh, you know supporting fascism and and things like that. Uh, you know, coming out of 4chan, but then it's like they've gone so deep into irony that it's become like that has become their reality now, and it's it's insane to me. Like actual fascist dictatorships. Are miserable, awful places ruled by completely evil people, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that these people would be the first, probably the first against the wall if the revolution ever came. <laughs> so, <laughs> steal, I was gonna say that. <laughs> I can steal my stolen <laughs> jokes. How dare you? Uh, but um, yeah, like uh, I was listening to this. I actually, uploaded a, a video of Jeffrey Tucker talking about it, and he pretty much kind of his, his summary of it was basically. Like the real difference between the reds and the browns is that at least under the browns you can eat and that seems more appealing to the right. And if you're really into this whole like everything the left does is terrible, you're going to be sucked into that camp. And that's kind of what's happening to these people. Yeah, I, I listened to that. It was it was excellent. Uh, yeah. That was Jeff made some really, really good points on that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, I, I don't I just don't understand. Like, we, like we have like historical evidence of what happened during these situations. And these are not new ideas. They're very, very old and very, very like dated ideas that no one really holds yeah. to for good reasons. There's good reasons why. Yeah. You know, there's there's good reasons why people still accept Marxism. You know, they kind of have this idealistic view of the world, you know, and mm -hmm. they don't they you know, they can they can excuse things like, oh, there's no real communist states because, you know, it never defaulted in the, into true, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, that's while well, that's true. But you had how many attempts to get from that Marxist transitional state into a fully communist country? How many times does that happen? You know, like yeah, and and they were absolute nightmare societies. Yeah, so totally why would we, if if a nightmare society is a step on the road to you know the true happiness of communism, 
you know what? I, I'm I'm fine with being only marginally happy. Yeah. I don't need to be truly truly happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna sit with my Nintendo and my Xbox or whatever, and I'm just gonna just play that and just you know deal with some poor people every now and then. That seems okay. Yeah, exactly. Seems like a good trade off exactly. to me. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I just I just don't understand like how how people get sucked into something that's just so blatantly just wrong and just evil, mm-hmm. you know. You know, you know, as a nihilist, you know, I'm talking about evil, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I'm a I'm a kind of a soft objectivist, so we're a, we're in oh. good company, I guess. <laughs> Tell me about that. How do you reconcile objectivism with anarchism? Are you like objectivist girl? <laughs> oh god, no. No, no, no. Don't bring her up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am not. I am nothing like objectivist girl. You know, even objectivist. I have a girl, job, all right. I have on. a job. I will say this: objectivist girl doesn't want to be associated with objectivist girl anymore. So, <laughs> 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 she has actually told people to stop calling her that. So, <laughs> oh, that's a, that is awesome. Yeah. Oh my god, that makes me feel good. <laughs> No, I uh, no, I, I consider myself a soft objectivist because I don't know enough about philosophy to <laughs> to make you know end end of argument uh kind of arguments here uh but i do think that rand had the important stuff right you know you should you know your your goal should be to try to be happy you know trade is good and uh the use of force is unjustified yeah which should make her an anarchist i mean that that should but well well, where she fell off with the nap thing is that she didn't consider it uh, an axiom like a lot of like anarchist cap uh anarchist yeah. libertarians do and i'm i'm on that same fence like I, I'm, I'm one of those people like, i don't think it's an axiom uh it's a good rule of thumb to kind of judge like you know what should we do in the certain new conflicts that we're seeing with new technologies and stuff like that but for the most part you can't use it axiomatically well yeah and that, i yeah. mean that's why most people refer to it as the non-aggression principle rothbard yeah. referred to it as the axiom but uh that's why I think it's now he, the nap yeah i think that he even kind of backed off later on didn't he um i'm, I'm not sure yeah I think so. I think that's what the whole ethics of liberty was. It's been a while since I've read that. It was, you know, they mm-hmm. had some problems too, but I mean, like there was, it was kind of like he was backing off a little bit and introducing new things. Mm-hmm. Um, Molyneux still thinks that it's the only thing you need to bring in unless you start pointing out problems and like, oh, well, what about the, you know, NAD and thought experiments are invalid. It's like, well, oh, I thought we're. <laughs> yeah. Or, 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 you know, if you bring black people into it and oh. then the NAP doesn't really matter anymore and oh, you can, God. you know, you can strangle them in the street if you're a cop, uh, because you know, they were, you know, that one cigarette that you're selling outside is hurting the business. Like I, I, I can't even believe, I mean, I can't believe that this guy has gone there, uh, but it's, oh, it's I, I don't know how he, I know. I don't know how he's continued to, you know, call himself a libertarian or an anarchist or anything when he's just straight up licking the boots of the cops continuously. Uh, and, and any, any issue involving race, he's kind of, it's like, he's, he's choosing the ugliest position he can all the time, even when he's wrong, like just so clearly wrong, like the Eric Garner thing. I couldn't believe that he defended the police yeah. in that, or, or the guy who got, who just got shot in the back. Yeah, well, that was that cop. was the final straw for me. Like, I could understand, like, all right, you're just being stupid. You made a stupid comment. You're just doubling down because you just don't want to admit you're wrong because you're a cult leader. I can I can get that, but yeah. the, the the whole shooting thing in the back that was like that was the final straw for me. I, I had made a video about that, and I was like, I was like so angry. I was this was like when I was still trying to transition. Like, okay, I'm not gonna try to cuss so much in my videos. It's grading uh-huh. <laughs> and i know that was like a big problem with my channel for a lot of people like they were like you just cuss too much like i like cussing but this is this is like cantwell level cussing and <laughs> so i was like so i started backing off a little bit and but even still i just could not help myself i was just so emotional about like you know how could you just say that and then still yeah. pretend to be a libertarian and then it's even gone even worse now that he's getting into the whole race realism race, race realism thing and it's like mm-hmm. oh, we're getting back into this argument again like i know I'm just so tired of it. I know. I thought it was it. over. <laughs> you know, all, all the, the, the race reel is kind of like left to go hang out with the fascists at 4chan and the right stuff. And I'm like, oh, God, great. Now I don't have to deal with this anymore. And then now Mullen is yeah. doing it. It's like, oh, and now Cantwell. Cantwell's defending it, too. Cantwell. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Cantwell. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I've actually, I've met him in person a couple of times Sorry. at uh, various parties. He was fine. I mean, he. I mean, he was. He was polite at the parties. <laughs> I hear not, he's not, a, Go ahead. 
<laughs> no, you, you go ahead. I, I was, was going to babble. Yeah, no, I mean, I, that's what I wanted to hear. But I heard that mm-hmm. like, he's like a totally different person in real life than he is his persona on the internet. Like, it's just a I persona. Mean, I, I won't say that, like, because he's... I, so I, what I will say about Cantwell is, is he's honest. Like he, you know, he he says what he means, and uh, oh, yeah. and he phrases things in you know the most offensive way possible. Uh, sorry, I'm not sure if you can hear that. There's a kid upstairs bouncing a ball on the oh, floor now. That's fine. <laughs> um, but he, but he's not as like in your face. He's not gonna. He's not like screaming at people. I saw him at Porkfest uh, the last time that he was allowed there. I think that was 2012. Um, that's the only time I've gone to Porkfest. Um, and he seemed fine then as well. Like he got on, he, you know, he did like a, a rant uh, at this, this thing called soapbox idol, but the rest of the time he was just like sitting in a chair and hanging out with people. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> Interesting postscript to that story. You know who won that soapbox, right? No, because it, I was furious because I didn't get accepted into it. Oh, really? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> I'll tell you exactly why. Because they did not like the topic of my talk. Uh, I think I know where this is going. Go ahead. The topic of my top of my talk. Uh, it was called "Against Meathead Activism: oh. Why Activism <laughs> Fails and Makes You Look Like a Loser." And it was about how activism is completely, uh, you know, pointless. Most of these people they are fighting to lose. You know, getting arrested is like this this badge of honor for them, and and they're willing to sacrifice every bit of you know wealth and prosperity and 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 job opportunity that they have just to to fight the state. You know, when the state's not going anywhere, you're not making any difference, and if anything, you're actually making things worse because they will step up their game in the face of your your stupid activism. Um, and I didn't get in, and I was like, okay, whatever, I didn't get in. But then I saw the speeches from the other people, and they were fucking horrible. They were horrible. They had someone who was there who I didn't know who this person was, but apparently they're big in the in New Hampshire or something. But she was complaining about how people didn't remember her name. <laughs> Oh, man. And I, I, when I saw that, I was just like, "Fuck this!" <laughs> it's terrible. I'm, I'm sure this wasn't the same person, but it was MK Lords who won, and it was presumed that everybody was just. No, it was s- not MK Lords <laughs> who won the the thing. No, I'm saying like, yeah, I'm sure that wasn't her. Uh, yeah, no, she's, it was she's not, really but... not that shallow. <laughs> like, no, I, no, no, no. I, I know, know some you know, of those I, other. I know, I know her. She's great. Yeah, I, I, mean, I know some opinion, of those other. I don't know what you think of her. <laughs> oh no, I think she's great. Um, okay. I mean, I've had some some minor disagreements with her. Like, I, I had some problems that one of the head or uh, the Hass articles that she wrote, but I mean, or not wrote, but she was reading. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I mean, the kind of sentiment was nice, but I just had some problems with it. Uh, but and I mean, like just just things like that. It's like no big deal. Um, but I know that there's some some other libertarians there of the female persuasion that are very shallow like that. Like, how dare they not remember my name? Oh uh, yeah. But MK Lords won, and she was uh, she wasn't. They were presuming that Cantwell was going to win because you know Cantwell's got that tongue, and uh, mm-hmm. you know he's 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 got a tongue. He does, and mm-hmm. so they were. So they thought that, she, that he was definitely going to win. No one was really thinking about it. And then she just like swept him, <laughs> and he won. And he's had yeah. like this <laughs> this huge like <laughs> hatred of her ever since, to the point where like after she was led onto the freedom fiends, like he was like, like she called into free talk live to have a disagreement with Cantwell and he just flew off the rails and was like, I'm not talking to this bitch. How oh, dare I I? <laughs> Don't, Don't say her name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, just, it's that, that, that whole dynamic between them is like my favorite thing ever. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm seriously debating whether or not I want to get that flag. made. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think you, you should. Yeah. yeah, I think I should just get flags like every single one of my flags made, actual flags made, and then just yeah. have a collection. Like you know, every time I want to bring one out, I'll just throw it against my wall and do a YouTube video, of hang out again, and <laughs> see what people's reactions are to them. Don't don't even mention it. Like what flag? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I only see this my is the same flag. flag. I've always I only have one flag, yeah, guys. Come on, that's it. Yeah, tripping. That's that's the Lulbert's flag, right? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but actually, the the flag that we have for this month for the flagatry, uh, uh, I'm actually having ordered. It's uh, they just shipped it out today. I got the uh, e- email at like three o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, thank God, it's going to be awesome. So it's the um, 
uh, the, the Bobby Hill, that's my purse, I don't know you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, Which may be my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, and so I'm actually having that printed out. And then once that's done, and well, you can actually have it printed now if you wanted to. It's like 30 bucks with shipping. And it comes wow, from that's China. cheap. Yeah, and uh, every place that I looked, it's like $50 or whatever. And then I found these Chinese, I don't know if they're really anarchists, like left anarchists, but their website is called Black Block. <laughs> <laughs> and <I'm> like, <laughs> they could oh, be- wait, no, I saw that on the on the page. I was just like, you're getting ANCAP flags from a website called Black Block. Oh, yeah, they have they have all kinds of stuff. They have a re- they even sell a rebel flag that has the Gadsden oh flag on it, too. <laughs> so oh, my God. That's amazing. It's a rebel Gadsden. And I'm like, you guys are left anarchists. Like, how does that work? Well, oh, my God. It's kind of funny. They, I saw this uh, New York Times article. Uh, it was maybe six months ago or so yes. where. I know <laughs> they was uh, talking about how in China they have all of these brands that are like English names that are like either really offensive or just these like knockoffs of things like there's a sunglasses company called Helen Keller and you know they have like a, a logo that says like you know it's like the HK and it looks like Dolce & Gabbana or whatever it's like really professional they have a great website and oh people God. have brought up to them like you know that's kind of offensive that you're selling eyewear based on someone's name who was both deaf and blind. And the response was, uh, it's just a name. Her personal shortcomings don't have anything to do with our product. (laughs) Her personal shortcomings. Yeah. Or then there was, uh, Johnny workers, red labial whiskey, (laughs) real, a real thing. (laughs) Shit. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. So maybe maybe Black Block is just kind of this. Like they they found something they th- they thought was kind of catchy without knowing the kind of cultural connotations with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean they also they also sell the um, what did I what do I call them the uh, the twenty first century's tinfoil hats. Um, yep, the Guy Fox mask. The Guy Fox mask. But they do some really good ones, like to the point where even I'm like, I kind of want one. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> they're like really thick, like resin. Like uh, they're like yeah. you can use them as like paintball masks. They're that w- that well made. Whoa! And I'm like, wow. Like I kind of that want would be one. a pretty rad paintball mask. Too. <laughs> yeah. You know, they have other cool stuff there that's not just Guy Fox stuff. But anyway, I, I don't. Yeah. I'm, I'm not paid by them at all. By the way, this is not you know whatever. Yes, they're, he they're, is. They're, they're too they're too cheap for me. <laughs> this is China. Like most of them can barely even get rice. All right. <laughs> yeah. And I, mean, and I mean, we are, it's, we all know that you're, you know, getting checks from the Koch brothers every two seconds. Yeah. So yeah. By the way, I've please been donate for them hashtag, for years. I, <laughs> hashtag please donate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is an amazing Facebook group, by the way, you have to join that. <laughs> what is it? It's called it's hashtag, 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 please donate. And it started out, I guess, making fun of, uh, Alex Jones, <laughs> and then it went on to like uh, Kokesh and uh, who else? Cantwell. Um, uh, who's that one guy? He does like another radio show. I forget his name. Uh, it, but anyways, like it has like just all these like libertarians who like ha- you know have their cups out. Like you know this is how I make my living. Yeah. Please donate. It's the libertarians. Yeah, I mean like I we have donation things on there, but it's kind of like eh, whatever. Like you know if you want to chip us a couple bucks, keep this thing going. Well, it's fine. You know like, yeah, I'm still exactly. not going to quit my job. Like. I like yeah. <laughs> I like being able to like do this and then go to my real job and then like if I decide like you know what I'm done with this thing and just you know just leave it up and not worry about it I can you know and yeah you're not you know you're not uh, moving to New Hampshire because a single investor was going to give you money to do so and then they pulled out <laughs> and then you're saying all sorts of racist shit and really offensive shit and wondering why people aren't giving you money anymore and now you have to move back to New York. Uh. Um, I don't, so think he's moving back to New York. I don't think he's moving back to New York. This unnamed person. I don't think he's moving mm-hmm. back to New York, but yeah. I won't say his name. Yeah. Don't say his name. <laughs> don't, don't say, say his, his name. name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the freedom things actually refer to him as uh, he who cannot be named. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you know, they actually considered it a cuss word. And if you like, you said it, then you have to they'll, it, they'll like bleep it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> They've actually told like, the soundboard to bleep it. But recently they, they haven't been because we've been talking about him yeah uh, you know and all those little follies that he's been doing lately uh mm-hmm. and now that he's hanging out with the right stuff biz and he actually did a podcast where he did a um he actually played one of the right stuff business parodies which honestly like i think they're funny they're terrible and like i die inside every time i listen to them because they're just so just terrible um yeah. 
you know, like the message, but everything else is great. <laughs> it's funny. Um, but, yeah. you know, you're just like, oh, man. But he's like playing him on his podcast and then going like, oh, check out the right stuff. Biz. Those guys are great. Oh, God. Like, no, don't check them out. <laughs> like, don't. Huh? They're not great. The thing is, I don't think that Cantwell will go fash, but if like maybe he will i mean are we are starting are we are we starting the countdown now that he's linking to the right stuff yeah. the, is he gonna is he gonna go full fascist in any moment <laughs> i think one of them is still libertarian one of the people over there it's still libertarian but mm-hmm. they think that it's not possible unless you have like a system of kicking out all the people who aren't white or asian yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah good stuff there Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go check yeah, them out. Great, they're really cool. Are really, yeah, but, these are good ideas. You yeah. might want to li- t- take a listen to them. They have some cl- some interesting <laughs> things to say about non-white people, <laughs> non-whites and non-Asians. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of fun because we're we're. I don't know. You're still friends with Marokio, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm still friends with him, even though I disagree with everything that he says. Now. <laughs> but you know, it's like you know, you know, he's 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 a funny I, guy. Yeah, he is. And I asked him about uh, his stuff because, you know, it was getting continually more edgy. And uh, and he was like, no, I mean, this is I don't even well, I don't remember what was said, so I can't tell you what it was. But the sentiment was that, like, OK, he's not crazy. He didn't go crazy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he still defends it. Like every time I do my, my YouTube hangout, he'll come and hang out and he's fun. Oh, really? <laughs> he does. He does give some very interesting input. Very good. Not edgy stuff, but it's very funny stuff. And, he uh, is like one of the funniest people I've encountered on yeah. the internet. <laughs> oh, no, no doubt. And his, his parodies are hilarious, even though they're extremely like, it kills you inside offensive. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not one of those people that's very easily offended. offended. And, I'm, and I'm really not Nor offended by it. But even, I, I, even listening to it, I'm like, I should be totally offended by what I'm listening to right now. I know. But instead, it's I'm laughing. Where you're just like, I know. It's, it's the thing where it's like, even I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> I can't believe <laughs> you just said that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> like stuff up is go check them out. They're good people. Yeah, go <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> oh God. Uh, so do we have uh, anything else? Are we done talking about Molyneux and Cantwell and the descent into fascism? I, I think we. I think we're done with the descent into fascism. All yeah. right. So I'm out of out of material. Oh, your machine thing came back. I guess it says you're a serial killer. Oh, I think this always comes. That out sounds about right. Yeah, I, I, I know. It's like that's what it told me. Everybody that I interviewed, you know, all my friends, serial killer, every single one. <sighs> I should put it back on Craigslist. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, I guess that wraps it up. Uh, hashtag please donate. Uh, Lulberts. Hashtag please donate. Yeah. Hashtag please donate. No, I don't care. Don't donate. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> unless you want money to make more crappy <laughs> horror films. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll make them. <laughs> Six sided dice. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm not going to say worms this time. Shit. Wrong show. <laughs> All right. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT NoGov license. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason in, in this country and in a bunch of Western world, it's okay to just judge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about Fiend Phone. Fiend Phone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try FiendPhone right now at FiendPhone.com. But we're also raising money to vastly improve FiendPhone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com. F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com. Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. FiendPhone. I never knew remote audio could be this good.